Hey guys, it's James Castle here. Hope you guys are all safe and well. So, today is finally the day I'm going to be releasing the video you've all been waiting for, which is my game console collection. So, this is going to be in two parts. Part one is going to be me showing off all my consoles, what I've got, which they are right in front of me at this moment. And part two, in a completely the next video on my channel is do they still work we'll get to find out that a little later on let's crack on with the first console i have got so before i start these consoles that i have got they are either things that i've actually bought been given via a neighbor or been given via a friend so the First off, we're going to get straight through to the first console, which is Super Nintendo Entertainment System, or known for short, the SNES. As you can see, this is the PAL version of the console. As you can see there, it says PAL version. And as you can see on the front, it's got the power, where you turn it on, turn it off, the reset button, and the eject button when there is a game in it. On the back, you can see it only needs the power power supply to plug in this it's just a standard plug you can use either the the snes the nes or the gamecube wire which will automatically connect to your tv if it's either a standard or a hd have the a game with me just to show you how to place the game in and eject it the game that i've got with me is donkey kong country so all you do is place it in the slot and then as you usually do Press it in and it will fit very nice in with the actual slot. Once you turn it on, you will see this light bulb go red and light up. Once you are finished playing, turn it off. If you want to reset it at a certain point where you have died, press that straight down. And then the best thing about this is if you press eject, it will just jump out by attack you. Like so. What we're going to do now is move on to our next console, which is going to be the Sega Mega Drive. Mm. As you can see, the Sega Mega Drive, 16-bit console. This is the Mega Drive 2, because the first one I do not own, which is basically the massive huge one. And on that, you could adjust the volume and you can plug your earphones in. So the front of this, it's just got the usual slot, like so. It's got the power button, and it'll light up once it's turned on, and then just the general reset button, like so. There was also a third model of this, but it was very, very rare to find in the UK. On the back, you can see that it is just two general plugs, like so. So it's just the actual power supply again, and this time you needed um, an adapter for the actual plug-in and this would only work on a standard TV as you can see this also did rival this thing these two were at each other's throats between 1990 to around 1995 and trust me it was a very very good rivalry we now move on to our next console which is the Sega Dreamcast. So, with this thing, as you can see, this was another um, Sega console that have been released. Before this was the Sega Saturn, but sadly, I do not have that part of my collection. At the very front, it, I, I you see on the majority of the thing, of the two you've seen so far, it's got the power button, and then this light will light up in red, and then to open, it swings up very, very slow. On the very front part as well, this is one of the first consoles that you could actually have four players. So actually use four controllers to actually good play with all your friends and when they used to come round on a small standard TV. On the back, you have the original power supply, which is different to the one with the Sega Mega Drive or the Genesis, depending on where you live in the world. And also, all you needed was the AV out. And plus, this was one of the very first consoles where you could actually play online by placing 
uh, internet wire into here. It's one of the wires that you would use in your modem. You put you into your modem and put the other end into here instead of your computer or laptop or whatever. And you will get to play people online and get to verse them on the game, on certain games like set radio, like so. The difference between this Dreamcast and the American one is because of the swirl. The swirl in Europe is blue. The one in America is red. The startup screens, you may be thinking, may be a little bit different, but no, they are both the same, but just starting up with a different color of the swirl. So yeah, how amazing certain logos end up becoming on certain game consoles. So now guys, we are now going to move on to the Game Boy Color. So this is in a light blue one, as you can see. You could probably seen these from the original Game Boy. This is the this has actually got additional color onto it, and you could actually once you turn the console on, you could actually change it into certain colors. You could have playing a game dark, dim, dead bright, or even in a light blue setting. On the back of this, that is where you will place the batteries into there. I know it is a bit of a mess at this moment. And what will, will happen then is once you slot this back on, like so, and then you've got the original up, down, left and right buttons, the A and B buttons just here, that and select button is for the majority of the games. I've also got a cartridge here as well. To actually... The game I've got is to all you Pokemon fans out there, Pokemon Yellow. Get the uh, cartridge into the slot at the top. All you need to do is the same again, like with the SNES, and the Mega Drive is just slot it down so you hear it click and then once it turns on at this moment it won't because it's got no batteries in it and once you finish with it take it out very slowly don't be doing what I did when I was a kid which where I got my teeth and just started biting the crap out of it and then you're wrecking the picture of whoever I think Mario Land 3 I basically got like half a picture because they ended up chewing it when I was young I know, that's what we do when we're kids. We learn. We are now moving on to is the Sony PlayStation 1. Well, in this case, it's the Sony PS1. Because this is the small version that came out in late 2000. So you didn't have to have the massive bulky PlayStation 1. This was for small spaces. And look how cute it is. So you probably, a lot of you guys may have had one of these around late 2000s, or even getting close to when the PS2, the fat one, once it first got released. So to actually open the lid, it's just that, like so. And whatever you do, guys, you've probably done this in the past as well. I used to play with this all the time and start spinning it. I'm not, I've just done it then. For an example, I've only done it a bit, but if you consistently start spinning it like mad, while there's a disc in there, it will end up wrecking your discs and they will get scratched and damaged. So, just a warning, please don't do that. And once you close it, all you do then is press the power or reset button. You didn't have a reset button on this, so it'll come with a power as soon as you hear this noise. So that's you start the game and then you'll hear the disc spinning like mad inside and then turn it off, you press the button again. On the back, it's just the PlayStation Vault is needed for this. You cannot use any other plug. All you need is an AV multiple out as well. This will also work with the PlayStation 2 wire that will come with your PlayStation 2 and the wire if you have a SCART lead for the PlayStation 3. This is also one of the first consoles you could actually save data on as well. So you've got the two memory card slots here, like so. Another thing is you could buy as well, you could buy, also buy a multi-way, which is you could place a control, an attachment here in the very uh, first slot where the PlayStation is, where you could put your controller and you can have up to four people playing on this. I'd just like the Sega Dreamcast, why I've just shown previously. Next guys, we are going to move on to, now I've got the Game Boy Advance. So with this, it is the one up from the Game Boy Color. 
with this, it is a little bit wider. And you will also, it's the same buttons you get on the original Game Boy. Just spread out a little bit. And also, you get the L and R buttons as well for left and right. And you put the games there in the very top there, like so. And if you turn on the power like so. Oh. That wasn't meant to happen. So, uh, so that's how it turns on. And then once the game comes on, it will say Game Boy and actually say Nintendo on the actual video itself. With this as well, you can also connect a wire to the top here. And you can connect this to a Nintendo GameCube. Funnily enough, guess what next is? The Nintendo GameCube. As you can see, this could actually connect up with the Game Boy Advance. All you'd need is a cable which goes from here all the way into this area here. Like so, this is another console. I think this is the third console I own where you could actually have four slots here. And you can connect with your friends. Like so, and luckily enough, there is also a memory card shown in here as well. And as you can see, there is only 59 block we're allowed. And if you probably didn't notice on a lot of Nintendo stuff, the save data was their blocks. So you could only save so much on it. And once you place that in, place it into that slot there. And it'll click just to say it's in. On the very top, you've got the power button. And this red this button here will go to red to light up reset like so and when you press open that is what it looks like same again guys do not touch that area like so on this one you can't help yourself because to actually get the game out you have to press down to actually get the discs out of the system and it, as you probably notice how small the actual discs were if I actually just place down the lid, where it says Nintendo GameCube, that is actually how big the actual discs were for this console. And this is a platinum version as well. The original one is purple. This one is very rare. There was only, I think there was only a million copies you could get of this console. On the back. It's just the original same for the, like I mentioned before, it's the same wire you can use for the SNES or the NES. Just a different wire you plug in here for the power source, like so. And on the bottom, the GameCube's got so much. For this here, it's got three things here. You've got something known as the high speed port, which all you have to do is pull that out. And you get this area here. You also do have this area here, which is one of the special ports, special port one, and also you have special port two. These two areas here, this big block, is actually used for something known as the Super Game Boy. This is also on the SNES as well, but I did not show it due to certain reasons. So if you end up placing the bits here into these two slots, you could actually play original Game Boy, or Game Boy Color games, or even Game Boy Advance games, on the GameCube. Next, we are going to move on to PlayStation 2. So, I don't think I need to go through a lot about this because I know the majority of the world had one of these because it was the best selling console ever. So, as you can see at the very front, that's where the controls go, that's where the memory cards will go, like so. Let's place that into there like so. I've got a red one, which is cool. With the logo, you can end up spinning it round. You can either have it like this, lay down like so. Or you could actually turn it and have it stood up so you can actually see the actual thing. Two buttons, power supply to actually power, su power where you can actually just press the thing. Jet button where this tray will come out. Then on the back, You'll see the fan, uh, it blows all the air. You will also have the power supply here in this area and you'll have the AV output as well. You can sadly not use the same AV output for the PlayStation 1. You will need an aerial if you want it to connect. Yeah. Also the fan is probably one of the first ones you'll actually see on any of the consoles that we've seen. 
You may have seen it very briefly on the GameCube, but this is the one where you actually see the full fan blazed out like so. There is also something known as an expansion bay, which is here. I sadly cannot get this off. It is very tough. And after having this for around 15 to 20, 15 to 17 years, I sadly do not know how to get this bit off. I know there's a bit here where you can pull, but I've not got strong hands at this moment. So we are now going to move on to is the Nintendo DS Lite. So me and my sister, two of these. So we've got, I've got one, which is this one, and my sister has got one as well. For this, it's just a simple press the screen up and then flip it down like so. Then to actually put the game in. There's already a game in here, which is, huh, funnily enough, Pokemon Soul Silver. I actually got a pack with this as well. You actually got a Pokewalker, which could actually time your steps. I have sadly lost it. But all you do is to actually place the game in. Like I say, oh, it is, place it in. And then you leave it click twice. Then when you open it, like I say, the buttons have all been still the same. Once you turn it on, you'll actually see a green light, which will appear here. Depending on what the battery life is, it will go red and are here as well if it will need charging. And also on the very bottom, which is this area here, you could also play Game Boy Advance games if you wanted to. Now, we are now going to move on to a big rivalry that happened in the gaming world. So the first one out of this series is the Nintendo Wii. I don't need to go through a lot of these about this either because, as you know, this was the one of the third best-selling consoles in the world, especially in Japan. With this, there was a couple of things on the front. So yeah, like I say, you had the power, reset, and eject. You may have seen, guys, on a lot of the consoles, this refers back to the SNES that I shown earlier. They all have the same buttons as the previous ones. Even with the GameCube, it is still the same buttons they have used. None of these buttons have changed. As you can see on the front here in this little slot, you can see where you can fit in something known as an SD card. This is where you could actually save any games if you could not save them actually via the console if you were playing too much uh, Wii Sports, Wii Party, Wii Play, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, which is one of my favourites that I played. And then on the very top, which you have got here, you could also transform your Wii into a GameCube itself. Where you've got the four slots here, where you could actually plug in your uh, actual controls. You can have up to four. And you could even use these on the Wii games as well to help you out on the likes of Mario Kart. Is where you could put your GameCube memory cards as well, if needed. And you could transform your Nintendo Wii into a Nintendo GameCube. Also, you could get a load of accessories for Nintendo Wii. You could also get stuff like an additional gun. You could also get a guitar or guitar, which you've probably seen in my gaming history video. Go and check that out as well. Um, a nunchuck as well, if you are playing games left, right and centre. Or if you're rowing or playing archery. Or something like that. So that's Nintendo's first one. Next we move on to from Microsoft is the Xbox 360. Now with this I do not own this this is actually my sister's. So at the very front as you can see here that is where you can put in like your USB cables or if you have a control pad you have a Lanyard, connect it to your control so it saves you actually buying batteries for the actual control pads every so often. This is the button where you will turn it on. These here are the memory units you can place here. And if you do get the red ring of death at any point, you can actually press this button here. And then there is a way you can sort it out. That is where the tray is, where you can actually place the games. And then all you do then is press this. So actually where the game comes out. On the back, I have actually got a couple of additionals for this console. So on the back, this here is where the power supply will go. It may be a little bit different because on this, this is something known as an intercooler. So when the fan is actually blowing like mad, where it is very hot, 
you could actually place the this on the back of it and it will keep it nice and cool and also we do have one of these things here which is known as a Wi-Fi wi router which is basically depending on where the Wi-Fi is in the house this will actually extend and actually give you good better graphics for your Wi-Fi and it will not connect and finally the actual hard drive on the top itself so this is where all your saved data will go and Moving on to the Sony aspect is the PlayStation 3 or shall we say the PS3 Slim which is what I own. So this is one of the first consoles where you will not need a memory card slot. As you can see all you've got is where you can turn it on which is this button here. I know we can't see it, it's very faint and the eject button there. I know I don't need to say a lot, a lot about this guys because I know the majority of you guys either had a PS3 or an Xbox 360 because this is where the rivalry of all three of the consoles which was PS3, the Wii and the Xbox 360 all collided and there was only one winner at the end of it which was the PS3. I'm only joking, that's in my view. I think the Xbox 360 actually did take the win, even though I am not really an Xbox fan. But yeah, the Wii actually done pretty well in the race as well, because it did end up coming out with all sorts of games for it, and there was a lot of activities you could actually use the Nintendo Wii. This could also connect up with the Nintendo DS as well, if you was playing anything like Mario Kart, you could actually connect up a wire, just like with the GameCube, with the Game Boy Advance. You could do the same thing with the Wii to the Nintendo DS. And finally, we move on to my final console, which is the Sony PlayStation 4. This is the original, and this is the last console that I own. As you can see, I don't need to go through this, guys, because I know the majority of you guys will either have an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4. Uh, the only additional things I can show you to this is, like I say, you don't need a memory card again, because it is back on a hard drive, which is just, if I lift this up, it is basically through this area here, where you can save all your data, and you can place in a couple of wires here on the very front. Like so, at the very front, as you can see here, I have got a two terabyte a hard drive on this because my PlayStation is only 500 gigabyte and I can only save so much data on this console. And yeah, like I say, there's not much to say about this because like I say, power is just here on this line here and then you've got the eject button, which is here. Your discs come through here. And all it is, it's just a gentle slide, and then it will come out like so. Before I finish this video, guys, I'd just like to thank a couple of people who give me the consoles. So, for the SNES and the GameCube, I would like to thank my ex next door neighbour who used to live not right on the wall, just next door to me here. He actually gave me them two consoles at the same time, so I really much appreciate it. I would also like to thank to the anonymous person who gave me the Sega Dreamcast and a very special thank you to Bill who gave us the Xbox 360 but I'm sad to say Bill is sadly no longer with us at this moment so all the best Bill and finally thanks to you guys for requesting this video because this video actually I've put a lot of hard work into and it's taught me days and days and days to get this video done and due to the lights outside as well everything to get this perfect thank you very much for watching this video guys don't forget to hit a thumbs up on the video if you like, have enjoyed this also put in the comments below how your game console history actually started so like mine was the SNES and so on you could put yours was the PS2 oh then it went back to the PS1 etc please subscribe to the channel as well if you are brand new around here 
and hit the bell button as well to see notifications when I come up on your precious little devices like your laptops or your mobile phones. And any more requests that come around, I will try my best to do so. And I will see you guys in part two to see if all these consoles still work. Well, one of them does, as you've already seen. So remember guys, stay safe and stay standard.